lawyers, we are most persuasive when our argument falls at the intersection of logos, pathos, and ethos. At the intention, what are we trying to get the other to do? When logos, pathos, and ethos are all present, we are most likely to convince or persuade the other. So let's talk now about pathos. Who is the audience? And how is the message received by the audience? Persuasion can come through the audience when the speech stirs emotion in the audience. Something persuades me when it arouses my emotions, when it speaks to my heart. Here we'll see a three-step process. Identify the audience, learn about the audience, and then convince the audience. First, let's identify the audience. Who is the audience for your persuasive statements? If you're engaged in a negotiation, then the immediate audience is the opposing counsel. In litigation, the immediate audience is clear, the judge or judges, and if it's a trial, the jury. But don't forget that opposing counsel is also part of your audience. Opposing counsel will be instrumental in how your argument is perceived. And maybe even the general public is part of your audience. We all know about cases that have been argued through or influenced by the press. Your own client is also in the audience. How will your client react to how the case is described? What is said or is not said about the audience, about the client? Is it consistent with the client's public image or brand? If you're in litigation, don't forget about appellate courts. Even if you're working on a trial and an appeal may not be imminent, nonetheless, we need to remember that an appellate court may be an audience for the transcript. Are there other audiences? Yes. And part of your work is to identify them with respect to the particular situation that you are facing. So step one is to identify the audience. Then step two is to learn all you can about the audience and the factors that may influence the audience's decision making. If we start with opposing counsel, how can we learn about opposing counsel? Well, websites can tell us about lawyers, about their background, their credentials. We can learn about other clients they've handled, other cases they've worked on. We can talk with lawyers who've been in cases or deals with opposing counsel. Or have they written anything that could give you insights into how they think? Have they spoken at CLEs? What about judges? How can we know or learn about the judge in our case? What concerns might the judge have about our case? What arguments might the judge be open to or resistant to? Here, remember to think broadly. How can we learn more about the judge? We can read their opinions. We can learn about their background. What did the judge do before he or she was appointed judge? Does the judge serve on any boards of organizations? Which ones? We could also talk to practitioners who've appeared before the judge. A local bar association might be a good source of information about the judge in your area. And then observe them in court. Nothing can compare to actually visiting a courtroom and watching a judge in action. You could also talk to people who've worked with the judge or who've worked in the court. That's a start. So now that we've identified the audience and learned what we can about them, pathos is about how the audience reacts to what we say. So step three is about convincing the audience, how the statement makes the audience feel. We're trying to arouse an emotion. What emotions are relevant? Well, a sense of justice or injustice, empathy, sympathy, fear. These are all emotions that we want to arouse potentially in the audience. And how do we do that? 
Well, one thing that we can use to help us is word choice, using words that have power and passion and precision. Sentence structure, using an active voice rather than a passive voice to get the reader to relate to the protagonist in your case. Also, we want to tell a story, tell a compelling story. This shows us the power of storytelling in the law. What is the narrative that you want to express? How can we get the listener to relate to or empathize with the account? Well, one thing we can do is to relate the story to something that the listener knows from his or her own world experience. So make the client look like the judge or opposing counsel or whoever it, whoever it is that you're trying to convince. Another thing is to create images in the mind's eye of the other so that the listener can see the facts, can see the story, and it comes alive for them. Or you could relate the story to a set of values that the listener can relate to. These are all tools that we have in order to convince the audience to accept our position. That's pathos.